for a few years, and uh, I'm very excited to be here. I have a, a good word for you. How many of you know what today is? Today, this Sunday is very significant, very special. It's, uh, it's very important uh, in, in, in all of the world, not just in America. It's Palm Sunday. Do you, all, do you understand what that word is? I know some of y'all have been coming to church on understand that, but there's people that are just coming to the Lord for the, you know, just new. Maybe you're visiting today, but Palm Sunday is very important. I just want you to understand um, why this is so uh, significant with what God is doing in your life today is, uh, is this is a, a triumphal entry for Jesus when uh, right before he goes. Next week is what? Yeah. How many of you know it's not about the bunny? It's okay. It's, you know, it's okay. I know uh, my wife and I, uh, we don't live here, so one of the first things we do when we get to America is go to Walmart. <laughs> because when uh, we come to Walmart, uh, we see whatever is happening in America because Walmart usually, you know, has the products and stuff like that. Just real quick, I just want to identify a few people. I just want to say, Mami, buenos dias, como estas? Gracias por estar acá. Esta mañana, Vic, thank you for coming. Any other friends? Michael, I know I see you over there and many other friends that are here and, and visiting. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, today and, and sharing this time. But Pastor Robert has been in a series called Serial, or sorry, uh, Silent Killers. How many of you all have been uh, hearing the messages every week? <laughs> Silent killer? Not serial killer. Sorry. <laughs> Y'all can take that out. <laughs> Silent killer. But it's like a serial killer, right? <laughs> Silent killer. Silent killers. And um, so we've identified some things uh, that just creeps in, that tries to come in, and, and we don't really see it, right? We don't see the symptoms. We don't see it. But in the end, it causes something to die. And so today I just want to share with you, there is another silent killer I want y'all to understand. And if you're taking notes, this would be a good place to take notes. The next, ser- uh, the next silent killer is complacency. Say it with me, complacency. complacency. We have allowed the comforts of complacency, complacency to creep in our lives. Complacency, being comfortable. Is everyone comfortable this morning? Yeah, okay, good. We like to be comfortable, right? You know, I have the privilege of, of being in Peru, and, and uh, I've been invited, and, I've been, I, and when, when Pastor Robert or our team comes, I invite them to go to different parts of, of, our, of our region uh, so that they can get out of their comfort zone. And sometimes we're in some environments that are very hot. It's always hot in Puta, but there's some places where it's very hot. And, uh, and I've preached in some places where I'm sweating, and everyone else is just normal, but I'm the one like, oh my goodness, everything is... It's just turning into water around me because it's so hot and it makes me uncomfortable. But in America, I think there are certain things that happen in our lives. Um, I'm a, I would like to say I'm a first-generation immigrant. Many of you are maybe the same thing where your parents or, or you, uh, you came to this country and you start working and, and everything just gets, you know, you're, you're all the time doing stuff. And then one day you get that car. And you think, that is the most important thing I need. I just needed a car so I can get to work and I can make more money. And then one day, you know, you get approved for a loan or whatever's happening and you get a house. And you think, all I want is a house. And I've been praying and praying to God for a house. And then one day, you know, something happens and, you know, I need a boat. And then you get the boat. Or you get that second car, or you get that Harley, or you get that land, or you get this or that, and then you get it, and then what happens? We become comfortable with what we have. The Bible uses words to describe complacency like lukewarm, stagnant, weary, sluggish, waywardness, lazy, backsliding. Don't raise your hand, but how many of y'all in December were saying, you know, this year I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And they sold you on that. You know, I see so many different types of gyms. And they sold you on that one-year membership because in one year they're they're just trying to tell you you're going to lose 20 pounds. You're going to feel better and all this stuff. And in January, you were gung-ho, especially after 21 days. You know, in February, you're like, you know what? (sighs) 
I got to take my wife out on a date on Valentine's, so uh, I'm going to take a day off from going out to the gym. You know, we're just going to eat a little bit more cheesecake this time than we used, you know, and then you take another day off. By April, you're probably going one day a week or maybe just stop going altogether. We get complacent. We get stagnant. We get to a level, and it happens in our Christianity where we get so comfortable where where we're at that we really start going backwards. We really start just, you know, looking at other things that we shouldn't be looking at, critiquing other things, being critical about other things we shouldn't be critical about. We begin to uh, look at what they're doing and not what God has called me to do, and we get comfortable. Today, I just want to tell you is God has called us for more than just be comfortable. God has called us for more than just be, be, be you know, oh, oh, I got that. You know, for, for some of you, you know, it's like, you know, I just need to get married. And you got married and you're like, pray for that guy. He's not acting like I thought. You know, when I was here, I, I, I used to do uh, the maintenance, and, and I, I raised up a great team of guys, and, and, and these guys, man, God is just by the grace of God, they listened to me, and they began to apply. Some of them got married. Some of them have gotten a divorce. Sometimes we get the things that we want, and in the end, it doesn't fulfill what we really want. So you need to understand there has to be more because once you get complacent, these are some other things that begin to happen. It leads to self-absorption. It's all about me, what I like, how I like it, when I like it. It begins to lead or it leads to gloating. Look what I have. Look what I've done. Look at this thing that I've built. It leads to pride and arrogance. No, 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 you you, you can't talk to me. Look what I have accomplished. Some people study their whole lives, go to college and go to university, and that's great, but they make that the thing. And then when they accomplish that thing, they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm $500,000 in debt. But I at least got the diploma, I at least got this. Some people just try to, I'm telling you right now, someone told me this one time, and it really convicted me. He said, how many of y'all have a smartphone, an expensive smartphone? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. You know, one that costs like $800 or more, $1,000, $1,500. And he said, hey, if you don't have the same amount of money that you spent on your phone in the bank, you don't need that phone. Tell your neighbor, I don't know if he's talking to you. (laughs) Because I'm telling you, when you go to the doctor and you got to pay that bill, they're not going to go, hey, can I pay you with my phone? (laughs) You know, or the light, light company, they don't receive phones as payment, right? We get complacent. See, the Bible talks about complacency as something negative because he knows he's called us with a purpose. All of us have a purpose. All of us have where we need to be going. When we understand that purpose, we begin to do it in a way that impacts many people. I'm going to take y'all now in the Bible. There's, I love this, this time of the year because it talks about Jesus coming into Jerusalem. He was at the Mount of Olives. He had been doing many miracles, but somehow it all comes together for this week. This week is so important. For the believer and the unbeliever, this week is so important. This week is an opportunity for every one of you to do something. And I've learned, and I I keep hearing statistics about people saying, if you invite someone to church this week for this next Sunday, there's a higher probability that they will come more than any other day of the year. So the Bible talks about the triumphal entry. And for, uh, for time's sake, because look, I only have like 10 minutes left. 
If you look at Matthew, if you look at Luke, you look at Mark, you look at John, you understand that every single one of these gospels talks about this because this is so important. There are different stories in the gospels that don't necessarily are in different gospels, but this is so important that God places it in your Bible to understand your responsibility. I just want to take you now to Matthew chapter 21, verse 7 and 8. So just to give you an idea, Jesus had been preaching, had been teaching. You know, his brothers at one time said, hey, Jesus, you should go. It's time for you to go to Jerusalem. And he kept telling them, right now is not my time. Right now is not my time. Right now is not my time. People want to say, no, you're going to be famous. Right now is not my time. But this week, say it with me, it was his time. So every one of these gospels in Matthew 21, Mark 11, Luke 19, John 12, it all talks about Jesus' triumphal entry. And I just want to take you to the part, and it's probably not on the screen, but it says, As Jesus' and disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage, of the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with a colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. All of this has significance. All of this has is important to know because when he comes in on a donkey, he comes in on a colt, he means that he's bringing peace. Means that he's coming from a point of victory. Everything that Jesus does is from a point of victory. Amen? So if God begins to stir something up in you and you're like, God, how are we going to do that? I don't have, and you start telling them all the stuff you don't have, let me help you out. Jesus always starts something from a point of victory. He's seated on the high place and can see the whole thing, and he's always directing us to good things. The disciple, uh, verse 6 says, the two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him, threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people around him were shouting, praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we just, we've already had such a worship experience, God. We've already dedicated these babies and their families, God. I thank you that your word comes forth today and people are transformed. I pray that there's someone in here that needs to be saved, that they get saved today. And there's many more people, God, that get engaged in what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So there's something that happens when these disciples began to put their coats on this donkey, on this colt. Let me help you understand that this is always a sign of respect, honor, and submission. When we lay down our coats we're honoring, we're submitting, we're saying that's the leader. We are laying down ourselves before him. So many times we want Jesus to lay down his life for me and what I'm doing. We want Jesus, we want Jesus, let go, uh, you know, where he says, follow me and I'll make you fishermen of men, fishers of men. We want him, no, Jesus, follow me because I'm doing this. It's the other way around. We have to submit to what he wants us to do. Without a relationship, you'll never find that out. You'll always be frustrated, and then you'll be complacent, and then you'll complain, and then you'll be pointing fingers at everyone else because you're not doing what God called you to do. What I like is it first started with the disciples. Everything that Jesus did didn't start with big crowds. He trained few. He had few around him. And what I like in this 
<coughs> in this story is that the disciples first put their coats to honor Jesus. And then after they put their coats and Jesus began to ride in, said that the people began to put their coats down. Now, you're going to catch something today that you may not have seen. Purpose identified is contagious. Uh, when, you're, when you understand your purpose, when you understand what God has done in your life, when you understand where you're going, it's contagious. People want to know. People want to come around. What, why? Why are you so passionate about what you do? Why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep going to the community? We already went to the community, Pastor Robert. Why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep helping single moms? Aren't they going to stop? If you don't do anything, they may not. You need to keep doing what God told you to do, but you need to identify your purpose. So today I just want to share with you something about coats. Say it with me, coats. How many of y'all wearing a coat today? A jacket? All right. Yeah, some, okay. How many of you know you can identify a lot by a coat? A person. A coat speaks a lot about that person, right? A coat, in the wintertime, you know, you have these big coats. We had an opportunity to go to Italy a few years ago, um, and we needed some big, heavy coats. My little, you know, thin coat wasn't going to work in Italy because it was like below zero. We've been to some places where you just need a light coat. How many of you remember jogging and you just need a light jacket for that? You know, so coats identify the purpose of what you're doing. And so here a coat, we see their coats being laid at Jesus' feet, meaning that whatever you had inside of you, you took it off and you placed it before the king so that he can fulfill his purpose. So God is calling all of us who have coats, and maybe you didn't bring your coat today, but you have a coat, to lay your coat down before God so that he can fulfill his purpose. But my question for you is, have you identified your coat? Do you know your coat? Some of them, you know, naturally, some people like leather coats. Some people like poofy coats. You know, in the 80s, those poofy coats were in style. Oh, no, I know. This is a young crowd. You know, now the, what's in style is are these big hoodies, right? You can't see what I'm doing. Have you identified your coat? Because I want to bring up some people that identified their coats, and I want them to testify what they did with their coat. Because today, I want you to identify, if you can, if you pray and ask God, God, what is my coat, and how can I lay it down at your feet? I want to bring up my, uh, my helpers. Sure. So I just, I just want to give you three points today on coats. What is your coat? I can stand right here. I have three people here that physically are wearing coats. But the coat represents what God has placed inside of you. What's in your life? What's happened in your life? James, tell us what happened. So my coat is uh, my passion, my love for people. I love people. I love being around them. And, uh, and I'm an IT guy, so I love helping people. I know y'all don't probably not like your IT department, but <laughs> I love people. And so uh, it's what I love to do. And about 10 years ago, I lived in a bar. I was in a bar Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And so I loved it because there was a bunch of people there. And so uh, it's just what I did. You know, if I had something to do, I would just go to the bar right after, you know, and then I'd go home. But, and then in 2011, I learned how to dance because my father, daughter danced, you know, at the wedding. And so uh, it became my passion. I was like, come on, everybody, let's go dance, you know, and I took dance lessons. I was passionate about it for 
three years. And so, but, you know, and that was my passion, is just being around people. And so, but when I, when I came to Powerhouse Church, that passion still was in me to be with people. And so, at Powerhouse Church, you know, most of you know me because I work in Champion Center on, you know, on some Sundays. And uh, another thing that I have the opportunity to do is uh, on Monday, I'm part of the Keys Mentor Program at Hutzel uh, Elementary. And uh, Tuesday, uh, I love going to the prison. And it, it's just a blast. It's a blessing to me. And Wednesday, I mentor some young men in puppet ministry before man church. And Thursday, I have the opportunity to go to the jail. And that's just as awesome. And then Friday, before I go to prayer, I mentor two other men, two young boys, uh, before I go to prayer. And so my passion is people. Amen. I love people. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's give James a hand cap. So, so what did you do, James? So James learned to lay down his coat before the king. Where he, God, you know, Dr. Cole, I love what Dr. Cole says. He says, God doesn't kill your ego. God sanctifies it. So God doesn't kill your passion. God doesn't kill the purpose, the things, the gifts he's put inside of you. God sanctifies them. And so that's one of your codes is your gifts and your passions. Have you laid it down before the king so that he can fulfill his purpose? You know, he went from going to the bar and now he's going into the schools and he's going to the prisons. God's doing some incredible things. And I just want you to hear that. You have gifts, you have passions that God wants to use to impact other people. Amen? What about you, Joe? Well, for me, my code is uh, life experience. And, um, you know, growing up, I grew up in a real old school Hispanic home. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. It's real machismo, and that's the way I was raised, and that's what I had imparted into me. It was, you know, as a man, you wore the pants. You did what you wanted, when you wanted, how you wanted, no questions asked. There was no, comp no compromise. It was a dictatorship. And there was no biblical manhood in my house. It was just manhood, and it was worldly manhood. Um, about 10 years ago as well, when I came to Powerhouse, I started hearing the teachings of Christ-likeness and uh, manhood being synonymous. And I began to take that in, begin to hear Pastor GF speak, and just, just begin to embrace it. And um, today, you know, after building my relationship with Christ and walking with him, seeing that Christ-likeness and manhood are synonymous, you know, today I get to minister to young men. I get to minister to men that I work with. I get to lead at Table Talk on Wednesday nights. I get to share at uh, Jordan Ranch and men's encounters. You know, we get to share at marriage encounters. Okay. You know, if I'm out on the golf course, I get to share. I get to impart who I am today into these men. Amen. So I no longer wear this coat. Amen. So do you, are, are you getting this? It, it's not a very difficult message. But the Bible says, as Jesus came walking in, people laid down their coats. People laid down what covered them what they identified with, what was their backing, whatever it was that identified who they were, their status in life, their position, their authority. It identified their passion. It identified whatever. But they recognized the king and they laid down their coats so that God can use it to impact others. I love what Joe said. Now he's understanding biblical manhood. How many of you know we need more biblical men? In the church, outside of the church, in the community, everywhere. But there's also another code that you need to identify. Aside from your passions and your gifts, aside from your life experience, how many of you know that we also have coats of pain? Kat? So when I was young, I, my dad was never there for me. So I was always looking for love and men or the affirmation from men and now that I know that God loves me and affirms me, I no longer have that pain. And I'm able to share that with young girls that don't have their father now. 
And um, so I go to OAC on Wednesdays, and I'm able to lay down that pain for God and just love on him and just have that affirmation from him. Amen. Amen. I love it. So this is another example outside of our passions and our giftings, outside of our life experience. How many of you, sometimes we want to hide behind our pain? We want to hide behind abandonment. We want to hide behind divorce. We want to hide behind uh, bankruptcy. We want to hide behind anything that happens in our life. We say, no, 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 I'm going to keep this on because this is my identity. This is what happened to me, and, and, and because, because it hurt me so much, I just want to stay in this position. I don't know why I need this. <laughs> I have this. Sorry, I'm used to this. I want to stay in this position. But something has, you, you can't miss this, something has to be awoken inside of you to say, you know what, what I've experienced, what I've gone through, I can lay it down before God, and I know God's going to use it to help other people. Yeah. You have to remember, he always is good to everyone all the time. We just don't identify it. Let me, lay, let me uh, do one more. And it's in Acts chapter 7, verse 58. If you can follow me, I think they're going to put it on the thing. I love this story. This is my favorite character in the Bible. Is the story about Stephen. If you don't know Stephen, Stephen, when I first came to Powerhouse, you know, I, I told, uh, we had Pastor Watkins here, and I said, you know, and then there were other people on staff, and I said, you know what, I know how to do all these things, and he said, Jose, we just need help, you know, vacuuming the carpet, moving the chairs, and I was like, okay, and I'll just be faithful with that, and I was faithful in what God had called me to do, and then I had to go work in nursery, and then junior high, and then every other ministry God had placed before me. So Stephen, for me, is a very influential person because he wasn't one of the 12. He was just a servant that cleaned tables. He was just one of the guys that, hey, can we get some guys to do this? Because we're really busy doing this. We need some guys to fix this. And so he was one of those guys. So I love Stephen's testimony. But as a table cleaner, one day he threw down his coat. And started believing that God can use him. And he was, the Bible says he wasn't very educated like everyone else. He was just a, a whomsoever. But he laid down his coat that he began to preach to the religious people. And the religious people got so angry, got so mad, got so offended. You know what happened? They took off their coat. And they laid it down before the feet of someone who took all that anger, all that bitterness, all that, all that suffering, all that stuff, all that hatred towards Christians. His name was Saul. The Bible says, and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid him at the feet of a young man named Saul. 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 Saul represents everything that when we're not putting our coat before the king, we're using it to attack each other. When we're not putting our coats before the king that can bless generations, that can help single moms, that can help countries and many other places, we're using it for wrong purposes. When these religious leaders that were so full of hatred laid down their coats to Saul, it just became more ammunition to attack others. Friends, I just want to tell you, sometimes as believers, when we're not doing what God called us to do and laying down our coats, we begin to get bitter. And we use this coat. Instead of to bless, we begin it to hurt others. There's people that have such an amazing life experience that have such, such a powerful testimony of pain, that have such ability and talents and, and passion to do certain things, but they're using it for the wrong team. And when you focus on the wrong team, you'll be holding the coats for the wrong king. Because it's us. It's complacency. I don't know if you know the story of Saul... But Saul was a man that was a Christian killer. 
He persecuted. He, he did not want them to live. But the Bible says that this happened right before his conversion. And his conversion was so impactful that Paul writes half of the New Testament that we read today. You know, there's times when some of us are going to see our coats and, they're, and, and, and you don't feel like this is making a purpose. Why am I laying down my coat? You know, God hasn't begun to use me yet. Why am I doing this? You don't know who you're impacting later on. You don't know. Even if it's a negative thing, when you lay down your coat, you don't know who you're going to affect. God wants you to lay down his coats. One last thing before I finish. Are you willing to lay down with God, or that coat, for God to use it? You know, I, I told Pastor Robert, I'm not going to talk a lot about Peru. He goes, but Peru, that's what we talked about. I'm like, yeah, but I, we, 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 we serve in Peru. We thank you guys for everything that you do to help support us to do stuff in Peru. But let me just tell you, that's just my coat. That's just my coat. Because at one point in my life, hearing these messages that you hear every Sunday throughout the week in the life groups, when you hear it, man church, at Awaken, every time you hear it, you hear it, you hear it, one day you need to decide. Say it with me. I need to decide. Am I going to lay down my coat? But one day I decided, can I, can I have that coat? The Bible says in Romans... 13, 14, if you can turn with me there. Just the first one. Thank you, buddy. You can give them all their coats. Romans 13, 14. The Bible says in Romans 13, 14, it says, Instead, clothe yourselves with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge in evil desires. One day... When I was serving here, God said, hey, you've been faithful with this. Now I'm putting a burden with everything I put inside of you to go serve another nation. So I said, God, if I already lay down my coat, you're going to give me something that I need. So he put on himself over me. And when the Bible says here, clothe yourself instead with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, he gave me a new coat. And he gave these guys a new coat. And every time that you walk into somewhere, whether it's your family, whether it's your work, whether it's your, your hobby, whether it's your church, whether it's your community, everywhere you go, you have a new coat on. Tell somebody next to you, I need a new coat. I need a new coat. Why don't y'all give these people a round of applause. Thank y'all so much. You know, I saw this quote and I said, this is pretty good, I'll use it. Nicholas Murray Butler, um, an educator, really I think the president of Columbia, Columbia University many years ago, 1931, said, there are, few, there are the few who make things happen, the many more who watch things happen, and the overwhelmingly majority who have no notion of what happens. There's only but six, seven hundred, maybe eight hundred people in this room. This city has over four million people. I consider this a few. But when you begin to lay down your coat and allow God to put on, dress you with his coat, you will make things happen. There's so much talent, desire, passion inside of this room there's so much life experience. There's so much pain inside of this room. God is asking you, are you going to lay down that coat? Can you all get to your feet real quick? We're about to finish and pray. I love it. My clock says 1130 and that says 1055. So I still got 30 more minutes. <laughs> My wife and I encourage my family's here. We're actually leaving uh, this Thursday to start our, our road trip back. Um, and uh, this trip has been different for us because 
uh, we got here, we got, went to Intense, I went with my sons, and then we went and visited uh, churches and friends from around the country. And, and something that um, kept popping up in every house that we stayed at, we stayed in some beautiful homes, we stayed in some great places, and, and there's this thing called shiplap. Shiplap. Shiplap? Yes? yes? See? Ship, shiplap? No, I don't know how you say it in English, in Spanish. Ship, shiplap? Do y'all know? Who does not know what shiplap is? Okay, shiplap is this wood paneling that you use to, uh, it's a new, it's a, it's a thing to decorate homes. And, and I was, I, I've been in Peru for nine years. Uh, and I come back and I didn't notice this. And we're talking about silent killers, complacency. But every house that I stayed in, and, you know, we, we raised up some, some great friends, and, and now they're doing great and stuff. And everyone, they were showing me, and, like, you know, we put some shiplap here, and, ship, and then their houses look amazing, beautiful. But this, this trend, this, this current kept uh, uh, just popping up, and I'm like, is, and I asked my wife, is, is that mean you made it? When your house has shiplap, that means you made it? Does that mean you, 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 you're at the top of your Christianity when your house, hey, we put some shiplap. I know I'm being funny, but say it with me, complacency. If we think something by somebody naturally, man-made, is going to be the top of our Christianity, I think we missed it. Because one day shiplap's going to be like that old paneling in the 80s. And you're like, oh my goodness, what were we thinking? <laughs> Linoleum, you know, that wallpaper. Please, if I offend anyone, I meant to do it, okay? I just want to let y'all know. Just let me help you understand. Are you going to lay down your coat for God? Just close your eyes for a moment because I, I really feel, and I want to invite the prayer partners Cleve, if you can help me with the prayer partners, but there's people in this room, and, and, and you've been, I don't know how long you've been a Christian, but God is speaking to you today, and please don't miss this. There's something inside of you, and it could be painful, and it could be hurtful, and it could be embarrassing, and it could be humiliating, but God is, God is allowing something inside of you so that you can lay it down at his feet. For some of you, y'all have life experience that blows anybody else out of the water. Or you, you, you just experience so many things that you don't even know what you have. And for others, man, I'm telling you, if you could just begin to understand the passion, the creativity that you have inside of you, you would blow everybody out of the water. But today I want to ask you, and I want to, I want to challenge you. Will you come up here and lay down your coat? Not physically, but you know what I'm talking about. Will you come up here and lay down your coat and say, Lord, I've been living like this and I didn't know why. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not going to say close your eyes, bow your heads. When you're ready, come up to the front. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. Say, I'm ready. I want to serve. I'm ready. I want to I wanna give. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. You know what? It just takes one or two, and then another one be like, oh, he's going up. I I'm going to go up too. Oh, he's going up. I'm going to go up too. Come on. There's another one. I'm telling you, there's some of y'all that have gotten so complacent. Hey, I'm already the greeter. I'm already working in the nursery. I'm telling you, it's bigger than that. Oh, I'm already on the worship team. No, it's bigger than that. There's more, there's more, there's more. Come on. I just feel there's more. I think there's five people more. I think there's more. No, I really think there's more. I really think there's more because this weekend we had only 200, I don't know how many people went with him to go serve. And there was only 250 people. There's more than 250 people here. 
I believe there's more because uh, last, we haven't filled up the encounter yet, right? And there's only about 60 something slots. There's more people in here that you need to lay down your coat. And today is the day you're gonna do it. Today is the day you're saying, you know what? Yeah, I know, should I go? I don't know. Just tell the devil, I'm just gonna lay down my coat today. Come on. Ask God today. If someone next to you if you see someone next to you and you just say, hey, do you need to go? I'll go with you. Ask the person next to you, do you need to go up? I'll go with you. Do you need to go up? I'll go with you. Let me just tell you, when you begin to lay down those things that have happened in your life, God will begin to use them to impact other people there is no, the Bible says, no eye has seen it. No ear has heard it. It doesn't exist yet what God has in store for you except in the heart of God. He wants to do it through you. He wants to manifest it on this earth through you. Will you lay down your coat? Will you lay it down for God? Some of y'all have ministry inside of you. Not just you're serving, I'm great, I'm, you know, I'm here, I made it, I'm serving. But some of y'all have ministry inside of you. Some of y'all have more and more. It's not just about going on a mission trip. You should come and go on a mission trip because I'm going to put you to work. But I'm telling you, some of y'all have ministry. I saw Brandy in here and Brandy one day said, you know what? God has called me to ministry and she came down and now she's doing a house, an empower house. I saw Pam in here and God called her and she didn't have to go to Peru. She's doing it here. I see these guys going to the jail. I see these guys going to the school. I see these guys doing all this stuff. Why? Because God has asked you to lay down your coat. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. I thank you today for this group of people. God, today... I just pray that this place does not have enough room. Next week, you want to see if you lay down your coat? Invite somebody to come to church next week. 